President Biden's younger brother, James Biden, appearing for closed door interviews on Capitol Hill yesterday. In his opening statement, James claims that Joe Biden, quote, has never had any involvement in his business ventures, also saying he never relied on his, quote, status as Joe Biden's brother. Some GOP lawmakers charging that James Biden's testimony includes inconsistencies about money that he received from China, and it contradicts testimony from other witnesses. Joining me now is South Carolina Congressman Russell Fry. He is a member of the House Oversight and Judiciary Committees, and he was there. Congressman, good morning. Good morning. Give us your take on the testimony of James Biden. I think the biggest takeaway at this particular point is that uh, in his opening statement, uh, Jim Biden said that he had no involvement um, and that he was not in an agreement with Rob Walker, Hunter Biden, and James Gilliar. But when presented with a document that he signed with those gentlemen, coming together for a business arrangement, uh, he changed his story there and said he wasn't familiar with signing that particular document. I just think that's kind of the uh, one of those situations in which if your lips are moving, you're lying. And that seemed to be kind of one of my biggest takeaway from what happened yesterday. So so he was he was just claiming he just couldn't remember. Is that kind of the gist of what you heard from him? Right. That, that, that was my understanding is that he was not uh, that, that his initial testimony was flat out said, you know, I was not part of any arrangement. And then when presented with the document, and that's just a huge inconsistency. You don't remember signing a document or being part of a formation of a group. Um, but that's really belied by all the evidence we've received so far. We know that payments have been made. Um, he was not aware of three hundred and sixty thousand dollars in payments in twenty seventeen. Uh, that they were from the Chinese energy company, CEFC. But Rob Walker just testified that he was on the phone quite extensively with um, J Jim Biden about those payments and that those were directed by Hunter. So, I mean, I think most Americans would look up and say, if $360,000 plop into your bank account, don't you think that if you were unaware of the orig origination of it, don't you think that you would call and ask, what is this money for? Was he asked um, about sending money to his brother, to the pre to, well, the then vice president, but was he asked about that? Well, I think the biggest thing on that is that there was, there's allegedly no supporting documentation, but the IRS mandates that if you're going to loan um, members of your family money, that you have to have supporting documentation, you have to have a payment schedule and an interest rate, and none of that appear here. And I think that's consistent with what we've seen so far with this family and the pattern of conduct that they engage in. Before we move on, because I do want to talk about the South Carolina primary with you, but last question on this. Uh, when James Comer was on with Maria, he told her that he, this was last week, he, he sent subpoenas out to American Express because he was looking for f those financial records. Were those presented yesterday at all? No, not to my knowledge, they were not. Okay, okay. So let's talk about South Carolina. So we are now just two days away, and we've got this new USA Today poll that finds that former President Trump has a massive lead over Nikki Haley in her home state of your state, South Carolina. Trump leading Haley by nearly 30 points among likely GOP voters. She's pointing to a new Quinnipiac poll that shows her beating Biden in the general election, while Trump would lose to Biden there in November. So she writes... Quote, it is not about who wins the primary, it's about who wins the general. We can't win if Donald Trump is the nominee. Congressman, your reaction to these numbers, to what we're going to, ex what we might see on Saturday happen, what do you say? I think. I think the polling consistently shows uh, maybe some outliers here and there, but the polling consistently shows Donald Trump not only getting stronger in the primary against every foe uh, that he's faced thus far, but also stronger against uh, Joe Biden in the general election. I think the evidence uh, clearly shows, and, and one of the biggest talking points for a very long time was that was that Trump couldn't win in the general, but the polling can, polling shows that that is not really true. And so this is a primary in name only. Why are we continuing to waste money uh, when we need to be focused on reclaiming the White House? The primary here, nothing has changed in over a year. Well, and but, so it's time to put things to bed and, and, and select Donald Trump as our nominee. OK, well, but I will say, well, she doesn't plan. You know, there was there was some speculation that when she came out to give her state of the race on Tuesday, you know, she came out noon Eastern time and, you know, she said, I'm not 
departing. In fact, I'm staying in. I mean, she's she is obviously going to is going to wait uh, hang on no matter what happens on Saturday to Super Tuesday. Uh, and you know, one of the things I thought about when she was speaking on Tuesday was she didn't mention any of the things that she had done in your state when she was governor. Didn't talk about the fact that GDP was at 12 and a half percent. She didn't talk about the fact that she had lowered unemployment from uh, over 10 percent down to 4 percent and change. I mean, all these things that she did for the state. I got the impression, but you tell me that she she knows that South Carolina is not going to be a win for her. She was she's setting herself up for Super Tuesday. Correct. Well, you know, I'm not a math expert, but if you take her best state, New Hampshire, <laughs> and you apply that result to all of the contests between now and Super Tuesday, Nikki Haley is only going to get about 11 percent of the delegates, and 11 percent doesn't get a majority and doesn't earn you the nomination. And so if you know these facts, and you know, and I'm sure that they do, why are we continuing to waste money? Look, some people play poker. Um, and, and, and lose, and, and, and some people run for president. I just don't understand the calculus here when we need to be focused on securing the White House and taking back this country. Well, I mean, she's she's got, obviously got a strategy, uh, so we'll see how Saturday plays out with, with the numbers, uh, the math. Congressman Russell Fry, it's always good to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. All right.